Now, Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations present... Suspense! Tonight, Autolite brings you Frederick March in The Night Reveals, a suspense play produced and directed by Anton M. Leder. Friends, for that Memorial Day trip, install an Autolite Stay Full battery in your car and relax. An Autolite Stay Full battery needs water only three times a year in normal car use? Yes, sir, only three times a year. Why, it makes a camel look like a drinking fountain. And in addition, an Autolite Stay Full battery has extra plates for extra power. Protected by fiberglass insulation for stronger life and longer life. In recent tests conducted according to the life cycle standards of the Society of Automotive Engineers... Autolite Stay Full batteries gave 70% longer average life than batteries without all these features. With an Autolite Stay Full battery, you need to add water only three times a year in normal car use. So remember, you're right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents Frederick March in a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I uh, should have known before that something was wrong, gentlemen. You should have known by your eyes. It was a queer look in staring at me one minute and avoiding me the next. Well, I, uh, I came home late one Monday night, and they were asleep. My son Johnny, my wife here, Marie. I lay in bed reviewing my day's work. Uh, I'm an investigator for the Herkimer Fire Insurance Company. And while thinking about the fire on 2nd Avenue, I fell asleep. And suddenly, I, I was sitting bolt upright, wide awake, with a strange feeling of being alone in the room. I looked toward Marie's bed. It was too dark to see. I called, Marie. Marie. No answer. Got up, walked to her bed. Quilt was bunched up. I pulled the covers down. The bed was empty. In the bathroom? No. She wasn't there. Not in Johnny's room, either. Johnny was alone. Marie wasn't in the apartment. I, I put on the light. I looked at my watch. It was two in the morning. I got dressed and I walked out. Rang for the elevator. It was nothing, of course. It was nothing important, but my heart kept hammering away. Morning, Mr. Jordan. Kind of late for you. Yeah, but... yeah. Good morning, Steve. Did, uh... You see my wife get on? Oh, yes, Mr. Jordan. About half an hour ago, I'd say. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, you see which way she went? Oh, yeah. She went towards 3rd Avenue. Said she was going to the... Yeah, went to the drugstore, I guess. <laughs> That's right. There's one over on 96th Street. Open all night. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Ah, that was it. She, she went to the drugstore. <laughs> I was worried over nothing at all. But I, I didn't know what to do quite. I... I didn't want to follow her, but the elevator boy was watching me, and so I strolled easily along towards third. I stood on the deserted dark corner. I looked up and down the street, and then I saw her coming. She was walking toward me briskly. Harry, what are you doing here? I got up and saw you were gone. Oh, I, I just... couldn't sleep. I had a dreadful headache, so I decided to go down for some aspirin. Oh, yes. Yes, of course, the drugstore on 96th Street. Yeah, but... You were coming from 97th Street. Oh, I took a little walk. I thought some fresh air would do me some good. Yeah, it's a nice night. I've only been gone about ten minutes. Steve says you were gone about a half hour. It was only ten minutes. What time is it now? 2.35. I've been out for almost 15 minutes. Oh, it's more than... It was any... about 15 minutes. No more than that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so. Everything seemed all right, but still I felt something was wrong. We got into our apartment, and we both went to bed. Just lay there. We didn't say anything. Listen. Huh? A fire. A fire. Yeah, not far. Over east a couple of blocks. By the river, I'd say. That's my district. Fire. Well, what the... Hello? Hello, Harry. Sorry to wake in the middle of the night. There's a bad one over near you between 2nd and 3rd. Maybe a total loss. Between 2nd and 3rd, Mr. Palmer? An, an apartment building? Yeah, 98th Street, uh -huh. 340 East 98th. I uh, called you because I'd uh, like you to go there direct first thing in the morning instead of coming to the office. Uh -huh. Okay? I'll meet you there. You're okay, Mr. Farmer. Good night. A fire on 98th Street. Yeah. 
Yeah. I couldn't see Marie in the dark, but I knew, I, I knew she was staring at me. I was very tired. Good night, Marie. Good night, Harry. For suspense, Autolite is bringing you Mr. Frederick March in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Hi, Hap. Say, uh, this week I've been helping my brother-in-law get the car ready for Memorial Day. For a whole week? No, no. While he was pushing her up the driveway, I just told him no need to wear yourself to a frazzle. Just get a new Autolite stay-full battery. Needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Why, an Autolite stay-full battery has more liquid reserve than a camel with water on the knee. <laughs> sure, sure. Yes, sir, I told him. Forget those holiday worries. Just remember, the extra liquid reserve in an Autolite stay-full battery means less danger from evaporation. For real performance, just install an Autolite stay-full battery. It needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And all that time, he was breaking his back, pushing the car up About the driveway? About that time, he straightened up and gave me a dirty look. How was I to know he'd excited his sacroiliac again? And anyway, he shouldn't have anything but an Autolite stay-full battery in his car for long, trouble-free operation. Did he tell you then he'd buy an Autolite stay-full battery? He sure did, but emphatically. Fine, fine. And now, let's get back to suspense. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Frederick March as Harry in The Night Reveals, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Well, uh, the next morning, I went over to 98th Street to inspect the remains of number 340 and to see if there was evidence of anything suspicious about the origin of the fire. Mr. Palmer was there. Yeah, there it is. Got it. Guess we'll be paying off on this one, all right? Mm, completely burned out. Anyone hurt? A few, but no one did. Lucky they just installed the new fire escape. Just the walls left. <laughs> Hey, that, that fire must have been quite a sight in the height of its glory. Yeah, yeah, quite a sight. Say, those walls look pretty bad. Might collapse almost any time. Yeah, the building will have to be erased. Gee, that, that fire did a good job. Oh, there's the commissioner. Uh, hello, Parmenter. Jordan. Hi, right, Mr. Morrell. You know anything about the fire, Commissioner? No, no, not a thing. Well, now that you're here, we'll, we'll take a look. No, I wouldn't go in there, Jordan. Those oh, I walls can take look... care of myself. Well, maybe you'd better not go inside. Don't worry Harry. about me. I, I know fires as well as anyone. You stay outside, Mr. Palmer. I'm, I'm going in. I went gingerly into the blackened, ruined hallway, ashes and debris up to my ankle, until I reached the remains of the stairway. Underneath were several baby carriages, just twisted pieces of metal. Burned fragment of something fell nearby. Come on back, Jordan. I'm all right. I poked around near the carriages, sifting through the fine, clean ashes. Something caught my eye. It was a blob of yellow metal. I picked it up, and then I worked my way out. She's burned through, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, clean through. Nothing left of her. Did you find anything? No, nothing much. Fire started in the hallway, all right. It worked its way up. The cellar's untouched. Uh, what's that in your hand? Oh, oh, that's just a piece of metal I found. Here. What do you think, Commissioner? Yeah, it's probably one of those gadgets they have on baby carriages. Yeah, I guess you're right. It isn't anything. But it was something. I had run my fingernail across this glob of metal. It looked like gold. I would examine it in detail later at home. Well, how are you, Johnny? Mama says I was bad today. Harry, you're home early. Yeah, I got through sooner than I expected. I. What is it, Harry? Your locket. You're not wearing it. You've never had it off before. My locket? Well, I... Don't you remember? Daddy, can I go over and see Davy Taylor for a minute? Yeah, yeah, Johnny, go ahead. All right. Gee, Daddy. Well, you shouldn't have done that. I didn't want him to go. He hasn't had his dinner. Never mind, Johnny. What... 
What'd you say happened to the locket? Well, I gave it to you. To me? Well, I put it in your pocket to have it fixed. The catch was loose. I don't remember. I put it in your pocket, Harry. I forgot to mention it to you. I wanted you to take it to the jewelers and get the catch fixed. I just put it in your coat pocket while you were shaving. When? Yesterday. Yes, yesterday morning. Well, it should be in my pocket now. I wore this suit yesterday, too. Nothing in my pockets, Marie. Well... Marie. Yes, Harry? Is anything uh, wrong with you? I'm perfectly all right. Not a thing wrong with you me. You look worried, as if you'd got something on your mind. Nothing. I've just been having a headache. Maybe you ought to see a doctor. No. Really doesn't amount to much. Well, I think I'll take a, another look for the locket. Which, which uh, suit did you say you put it in? Your blue suit, I think. Or maybe it was the gray, though. I... I couldn't make it out. What had she done with the locket? Had she pawned it? She given it away? Then I remembered something. I went in the bathroom, locked the door. I looked at this shapeless little glob of yellow metal. I rubbed the blackened spots away until all of it was gleaming. I took a nail file out of the medicine chest and began to file it. I kept filing until I had enlarged the crack to the full length of the piece of gold. And I slipped the nail file inside and pried, pried it open. Tiny fragments of glass, and then, then I saw a piece of scorched paper. It was a photograph. It was a picture of my son, Johnny. This glob of metal was my wife's locket. I put the locket and the picture in my pocket and walked out. All through dinner and afterwards, I watched her. She seemed very uneasy. Finally, I went over to my pipe rack, where I kept several books of matches in a jar. There weren't any there. And now I knew she was watching me, watching me closely. I looked behind the rack. There wasn't a match around. What the devil happened to all my matches? I, I, I have a match. Here, let me light it for oh, you. Oh, did, did you take the matches out of the jar, Marie? Well, I... Did you? Yes, I, I needed them in the kitchen. Shall, shall I light your pipe for no, you? No, I'll light it myself. I picked a match out of the book. It was a clean white match with a, with a green head. I struck it against the side. The match spluttered up into a yellow flame, fringed on the bottom with, with blue. Marie stared at it and, until I felt the sharp bite of the flame on my thumb. Oh. Burn yourself? No, it's all right. Would, would you like a nice hot cup of tea, Harry? No, dear, I don't think so. I watched her. Her hand casually brushed along the table and picked up the matches. Marie, huh? leave the matches on the table. I, I, I need them. I'm rather short of matches. The pilot isn't working. Is this the only book of matches in the house? I have to get some tomorrow. Where, where are you going, Harry? Just get a drink of water. No, no, I'll get it for you, Harry. Never mind, Marie. I'll get it myself. I went into the kitchen. There was a paper bag alongside the gas range. Matches all thrown in helter-skelter. Books of matches and safety matches all mixed together. I walked back and sat down in my chair. You've been, uh... You've been having headaches lately. I'm... I'm just tired. That's... Nothing serious. How'd you like to go away for a few days? Take a vacation. I'll get a maid to take care of Johnny and me. It'll do you a lot of good. No. No, I don't need a vacation. There's nothing wrong with me. But Harry, there is... Yeah? Uh, there's nothing the matter. You were about to say something else. I, I've got to go into Johnny's room and see that he's covered. He always throws the covers off. I sat there looking after her. And then I glanced about the room. There was the pack of matches lying open on the table. I closed the cover. And then I noticed her purse lying nearby. It was bulging. Harry! What's the matter? My, my purse! Yes, yeah. yes, your purse. Here, look. Full of matches. A dozen books of them. And these newspaper clippings. Give it back to me! Why are you saving these clippings? Why do you carry all these matches with you? Well, I... I, I bought the matches in the store, a, a dozen for five cents. And these newspaper clippings. Fire on 112th Street causes severe damage. 
And all these others. Why are you saving these clippings, Marie? Why, there, there's nothing wrong in that. I'm interested in your work. I intend to keep a file on fires. Uh, it'll help you in your work. That's very considerate, Marie. Oh, Harry, you're so good. Why should this have to happen to us? <laughs> About midnight, I went to bed. Marie didn't follow me. I lay in the semi-darkness, wide awake, trying to think what I should do. Couldn't collect my thoughts. Every time I closed my eyes, I could see the flame of that match, yellow and blue, crawling along the matchstick. Drink this, Harry. It'll help you sleep. Oh, uh, what is it? It's cocoa. It's very good for you. Uh, I'm not the one that's having trouble falling asleep. We both couldn't sleep last night. I'm taking some of this myself as soon as I go to bed. All right, leave it on the nightstand. Well, be sure to drink it while it's hot. Yes, Mary, I will. Good night, darling. Good night, Mary. Coco. And then suddenly I knew. I looked around quickly for something to pour it in. There was a radiator pan. It was empty. I poured the cup of liquid into it. Then I lay back and waited. I waited for her next move. About an hour later, I heard the door open softly and Marie tiptoed toward my bed. Harry. Harry? Are you asleep? I didn't answer, but breathed evenly. She hovered over me for a moment and she tiptoed out, carefully closing the door behind her. I jumped out of bed and hurried into my clothes. Quickly, I poured the cocoa from the pan into a bottle, put it in my pocket, and I grabbed my coat and I followed her. I rang for the elevator. She had only a few minutes headway. I'd catch up to her easily, and then... then we'd have a showdown. Steve looked at me with controlled amazement. Hello, Steve. Hello, Mr. Jordan. My wife went down a moment ago, didn't she? Yes, Mr. Jordan, just took her down. She went toward 3rd Avenue, didn't she? Why, uh... I think so. She sort of stopped for a minute and then turned towards third. I had to get back to the elevator because you were ringing. When I reached the corner, I looked up and down Third Avenue, and then I saw her. She was walking north. I crossed to the other side of the street and followed her, keeping at a distance. At 98th Street, she turned east. Down the middle of the block was the remains of last night's fire. She stopped in front of the gutted building for a long time, just stood there, looking at it. Then she walked inside. I waited a few seconds, and then followed her. Marie! Who's there? It's me, Harry. Harry! Why did you... Come along, Marie. We'd better get out of here. The police. I took her hand without a word. She came along. We walked home in complete silence. We both knew. When we came to our apartment house, I stopped and rang for the elevator. In the light of the hallway, I could see her face, my wife's face, ashy gray, her eyes brightened and painful. You run upstairs, Marie, and I'll, uh, I'll be along in a minute. Harry, where are you going? I'll be right back. Please, Harry. Don't, don't do anything. You run along, Marie. You're not going to... No. I'm only going to the drugstore to get something. I'll be back in a few minutes. I came home a half hour later. She was waiting for me. Did... Did you do it, Harry? Please, please, Harry, tell me. I've got to know. I had the cocoa you gave me analyzed. Oh, I'm sorry. I had to do it. Don't you see? I couldn't help it. It's very easy for the druggist, especially when I told him what I thought was in it. That stuff that makes you sleep through an earthquake. Please, try to understand, Harry. You must understand. Is the kid asleep? Uh-huh. Johnny's all right. I was sorry for Marie. She looked so haggard and worn. It wasn't her fault. I was sorry for myself. My head was roaring. I wasn't feeling too well. I kept seeing sparks in front of my eyes. I, I closed my eyes for a moment. Let's go to bed, Harry. Marie, 
Look, we can do something. Now, let, let's burn up every match, every match in the house. We'll, we'll never bring another match in. No. No, Harry, we can't do that. We don't want to. No, no, not now, Harry. Strange, isn't it? That this should happen to me. Me, a fire inspector. That's funny. Give me the matches, Marie. All the matches. No, I can't do that. Give them I to won't. Me. Please, please don't, please don't take them. I'll do anything you want, anything. Where did you hide them? Tell me, where are they? Inside the range behind the paper bags. I dropped her hand. She sank to the floor in a huddle, weeping. <laughs> And then I went into the kitchen and got all the matches. Please, Harry. Don't burn them up. Look, Harry, look. Look up. See? I'll light each book of matches one at a time until they've all gone up in smoke. The yellow flame licked its way down the matches. The cover caught fire and blackened. I watched her look at the flame with dazed eyes. Listen. Listen, Harry. You hear? Just someone in the hall. It's more than someone. Something's happened. Something has happened. I'll take a look. The house is on fire! Yeah, Marie, wake up, Johnny. Johnny! Johnny! You have to hurry. The flames are coming up the stairs. There's an upward draft. What's the matter, Mother? The house is on fire. We've got to get out. It's too late to go down. We'll have to go up through the roof. Oh, I, I hurt my leg. Come along, come along, Johnny. Mother. She'll come along. No. No, I want to wait for Mother. It's all right, Johnny. Go along with Daddy. I'll, I'll follow you. No, I, I won't go. I won't go without you, Hold on Mother. my arm, Marie. Come on. Give me a hand, Johnny. Don't be scared. The fire won't hurt you. It won't hurt you at all. You're safe with me. We made our way upstairs. Very slowly, because of Marie's sprained ankle. Finally, we got to the roof. There were some firemen on the next roof about 10 feet separated the two buildings. Don't get panicky. We'll get you off safely. Are we going to have to jump across, Daddy? Mother won't be able to jump. Her foot... It's all right, Johnny. Don't be scared. They're putting a board across between the two roofs. We'll just walk across. All right, now. One at a time. Tie the rope around you and come across. Johnny, Johnny, you go first. Here. Now don't be afraid. There. Rope will hold you in case you slip. Mother, you got to go first. I'll go right after you. Johnny! You promise? Go ahead, Johnny. Mother will follow you. And don't turn around. I'll keep walking. Oh. 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 All right. The kid's safe. Now you, lady. Oh. Be careful. The board. Oh. Hey, the board slipped off. Hurry, one of you guys, and get another board. Coming up. Your mother's going to be all right. You pushed the board off, Harry. I saw you do it. No, I, no, I didn't, Marie. I didn't. I, I... All right, mister. Just tie the rope around her. Now, don't be afraid, lady. And don't look down. All right. Ready? I'm ready. Okay, boys. She's all right. Now you, mister. All right. Johnny. That's right. Tie the rope around you. All set? Okay. On the ground we stood there, the three of us, watching the fire. Great flames shot out, stabbing at the sky. The top of the roof was burning now. A red flame crawled along, searching out the inflammable spots. And the wind was helping. All this time, Marie was shaking, shaking violently, but not with cold. I, I pitied her. And then she, she threw up her hands and shrieked. Ah! Harry! No, 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 darling, don't. I can't stand it. We can't go on this way. Police! Police, come here. Don't do it, Marie. There's no need to let the police. You don't know what you're saying. You, you... Police! What is it, lady? Hey, you better calm down now. You... Officer, pay no attention. She no, she... no, no. It's no use, Harry. Officer, these awful fires, they're not accidental. There's a, a pyromaniac, a criminal. I know who it is. You got to arrest the person. Arrest so there won't be any more. All right, lady. What is this? Who is the pyromaniac? 
the criminal is my husband, Harry Jordan. <laughs> this man here. <laughs> Arrest him. <laughs> well, that's... That's about all there is to the story, gentlemen. And then I was brought here. <laughs> she must have sounded kind of, well... painful for you to hear it all over again, Marie. No. It was all right, Harry. I wonder... Uh, I got a cigarette. Could I... Uh... No. I'll light it for you, <laughs> Harry. You don't have to worry. I won't try to keep the matches. She's been awfully good to me, gentlemen. You take good care of her, won't you? She tried everything to help. Hid the matches so as to keep them from me. She even tried to give me sleeping pills so I wouldn't... It's all right, Harry. I'm sorry about the locket there. Must have fallen out of my coat when I was in that building at 98th Street. I... It's all right, Harry. You can buy me another one. Sometime. You can't blame anybody for liking fires. It's not their fault. Fires are beautiful to watch. So bright and clean. They burn up all the filth and dirt. They're magnificent to watch, especially the big ones. The way the flames roar and crackle, lighting up everything around you. The beautiful fire. The beautiful fire. <laughs> Thank you, Frederick March, for a splendid performance. Say, I don't know. You and your brother-in-law are still friends? Why, of course we're friends, Hap. We have so much in common. Both of us think an Autolite Stay Full battery is wonderful. Why, it needs water only three times a year, normal car use. And he appreciates the fact that Autolite Stay Full batteries are made by Autolite, the makers of over 400 products for cars, trucks, airplanes, boats, in 28 Autolite plants from coast to coast. Yes, sir. And Autolite also makes complete electrical systems for many makes of America's finest cars. Batteries, spark plugs, generators, starting motors, coils, distributors. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. The lifeline of your car. So, folks, don't accept electrical parts that are supposed to be as good. Remember? Remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now here again is Mr. Frederick March. It's been a real pleasure appearing on Suspense tonight, working with this fine cast, especially Jeanette Nolan, who played Marie. And I'm looking forward with great interest to listening next week when radio's outstanding theater of thrills brings you Joan Crawford in The Ten Years. Another gripping study in... Suspense! Frederick March is soon to be seen with his wife, Florence Eldridge, in the new film, Christopher Columbus. Tonight's suspense play was adapted by Sigmund Miller from the story by Cornell Woolridge, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Leith Stevens. The entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leder. Next Thursday, same time, hear Joan Crawford in The Ten Years. You can buy Autolite Stayful batteries, Autolite resistor spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.